Welcome to PCTV. It's a pleasure to have you with us today. My name is Zara Rashid. I'm Jared Knack. And today we're going to be talking about a few things like peripherals and blogs. And I think you're going to find it interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So peripherals, anything that you can connect up to your computer, uh, the usual ones, your keyboard and your mouse, but we're looking at a more specialized one today. Yep. I think you'll find it fun. So, today, as I said, we were going to talk about peripherals. Now, some peripherals you might be familiar with, like your keyboard or your mouse, or basically anything that plugs into your PC with a USB, which includes stuff like this camera, for example. This is a camera that I use for Skype, and as you can see, it's got a USB connection. I plug into my PC. And then there are other, more specialized peripherals. Yeah, we, uh, we had a suggestion from our editor to look at a graphics tablet with a pen or a stylus, and... Uh how that works for your PC and what it's used for. Excellent, so rather than us showing you how it works, we'll get someone that uses it on a regular basis, our editor Luigi. Hi Luigi. Hi Nazar, hi Jared. Good, now can you tell us a little bit about the graphics tablet? So it plugs in with a USB, correct? That's correct, just like a regular mouse or a regular keyboard, just plugs in via USB. Can you show us what the actual uh, the, the graphics tablet looks like? Yes, it looks a little something like this. Uh, it comes with a pen stylus. And also, the most important part is this square right here. Excellent. Great. So now, show us how it works. Now, I know that you use it primarily for stuff like uh, photo editing and also stuff like digital printing and painting. So let's talk about that. Sure. Um, like I said, anything that happens within this little square, any changes I make with the toss stylus, it affects the desktop in real time. There you go. So open up a application where you could use it, like let's say Photoshop, I guess. Sure, I'm using Adobe Photoshop. Yeah. Um, I'm going to open up a picture of you two gentlemen. Okay. Okay. And <laughs> I can use this as easily as one would use a pen or a pencil. And I can make some changes. I can remove uh, some blemishes. How accurate is it, Luigi? It's really, really accurate, like real time. Anything I do on the screen will affect uh, the picture in real time. Now, obviously, to set this up, you need to have uh, the installation CDs and install all the drivers and make sure that it's all compatible with your computer. Is that right? Yes, that's right. So you can't really do anything until you've done that, and that's something you have to do. Well, yeah, the more specialized devices won't be recognized immediately by Windows, so there will be you know, sometimes I come on a USB stick or you just download it sometimes now. Or installation CDs or whatever it yeah, is. Yeah, sometimes you still get the CD. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Let's see. So, you're going to use it to get rid of some of our blemishes. There are plenty, plenty that he could get rid of. Of course, I'd like you to know that we don't actually do any kind of styling touch-ups on our uh, facial appearances in this episode or in any of our episodes. So, um, Well, you'd need a budget, wouldn't you? Yeah, you need a much bigger <laughs> budget than we have. And also, we like to film in the raw. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks for that. <laughs> Just removing some blemishes from your face. Um, Thanks. Making you look you. look even more beautiful. Uh -huh. um, yes. Um, like you mentioned, you must install the drivers with the CD that comes with it. And you must get the tablet the correct orientation, otherwise up is down, left is right. Luigi, how much do they cost? Um, this one is quite cheap. Um, no more than $100 perhaps. Okay. Well, that's pretty worthwhile. That's yeah. alright. I like that. Alright, so now show us how you do some digital painting with it. Sure. I'll open up a blank page here. I'm going to select a brush. Select a colour, green will do. So you've opened up Photoshop to do this with? That's right, I've opened up Adobe Photoshop. Okay, cool. Which is a common program, a lot of people recognise it. It's not free. No, it's uh, not free. It's not free at all. There are free uh, like tools. Paint. Oh yeah, there's paint that comes in Windows, but I think there's some open source versions that you can download. There's a lot of types of programs that can use these things. Which is great. Hmm. But Photoshop's common. 
Okay, so now I know that when you're using it for digital painting, um, the amount of pressure that you put on the stylus has a big effect on what it looks like. Is that right? Correct. Good. Depending on how soft or how hard I press down on it, it affects the transparency of the brush stroke. Oh, that's beautiful. And also the width of the brush stroke as well? That's right. You can set it quite simply in brush presets and you can set it pen pressure and once again, depending how soft or how hard, it affects the size of the brush. That's excellent. And so then you can do a little bit of digital painting if you yeah, wish. Yes, that's right. This is, this is one technique to make the digital painting look more like an oil painting or something out of acrylic. Excellent. Oh. Excellent. What a fantastic peripheral. Well, thanks very much for that, Louise. Thank you so much. And that's, like I said, if you'd like to know a little bit more in depth about how to set it up, how to use it, how to make it all work and compatible with your computer, Luigi's put up a much more in depth version of how to set all of this up and how to use it and how to make it all work with your computer on our YouTube channel. So if you go to our YouTube page, uh, of which the address should be right about there, then you will be able to see a much more in-depth version of how to use, how to set up and how to have fun with a graphics tablet. Thanks a lot. Thanks Luigi. Cheers Luigi. Thanks guys. All right, and uh, we hope that you enjoyed our segment about peripherals. Okay, in this segment of PCTV, we're gonna be talking about blogs. Now, blogs. what's a blog? A blog. Uh, a blog what, is... What does it mean, the word blog? The word, uh, well, it comes from uh, web log. Web log. So like a journal is how I guess it started, and then it uh, got reduced to one syllable in blog. Blog. Not the most see that happening. Not the most attractive of words, but that's what it means. Now, a blog, the definition of it is it's a personal website or web page in which an individual records their opinions as well as with links to other websites and they update the content on a really regular basis. That's basically what a blog is. Now, there's a whole gamut of different topic areas that are covered with blogs and not only that, you've got a thing called a video blog or a vlog, yeah. right, where you can go on YouTube and people have got video blogs. And what you can do then is if you wanted to find out, let's say, some makeup tips, some carpentry expertise, some how-tos. Yeah, you can find a, a blog or a vlog that will show you basically someone that has done it and giving you instruction. Of course, that's really, really cool. But then there are more popular ones. Like the most popular blog in the world at the moment is the Huffington Post. The Huffington so, Post. Yeah. So if we go to the Huffington Post, one. it is a very big one. Oh, there's a very big headline. Big headline. Right, um, as you can see, it began with the news and then they've got politics, business, entertainment, tech, media, world post. They've got a wide variety of subjects. Now this started off with Ariana Huffington right. doing it by herself and now she's, it's just loomed into something quite huge and it's no longer an individual. It's like a whole host of people all working for Ariana Huffington and creating this incredible news site. So um, how do you make a blog? Well. If we see, actually, if we go to our page in PCTV, you can see underneath one of our videos a whole host of little icons. Yeah. And yeah. a good number of these icons represent blogs, like Reddit is a blog. Yes. Blogger is a blog. Yeah. Tumblr is kind of a blog with tweet mixed in. Yeah, and it's got pictures that yeah. tend to be image uploading. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And then obviously there's LinkedIn, LinkedIn which isn't a blog. More professional. LinkedIn is more about. Well, it's really more about going for a job. Isn't that's it? right. That's you right. Know, so you kind of post your your. Um, it's like a professional. It's like a professional Facebook. Yeah. A Facebook for professionals. Yeah. Right? If you want to link up with other professionals in your industry or related in ind industries, then LinkedIn is really good for that. Yeah. Then they've got stuff like Live Journal. They've got stuff like Dig. Right. These are all little blogs basically. And if you wanted to share, because remember the whole point of having a blog is to link to other websites and upload content all the time. So you often share interesting things that you've seen on YouTube or on other web pages. Hmm. Isn't it also uh, just a way to get those little like clicks? Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, that's what it is. You know, they, they put these little icons in there that will uh, generate points. Yeah, like points. Yeah, like points. You can now, tell. <laughs> the, um, the platform that you use in order to create a blog, uh, one of the most popular ones is WordPress. So yeah, if we go yeah. to the WordPress site, um, as you can see, it says create a new website for free. It will give you the um, ability to create a fairly simplistic 
blog mm-hmm. platform and give you the uh, ability to to have it hosted on their site for yes. free. Yes. If you wanted to have any of the special features put in there, then I think you have to pay a subscription fee. Right. But up until then, and other than that, if you wanted to keep it really simple and basic, they give you the tools and the ability and the instruction on how to create a blog. So anything that you have a real passion about, anything that you have real expertise in, a blog is a way that you can make your expertise known to the world through the So web. WordPress is also giving you, um, besides the hosting, it's also giving you what they call a CMS, a content management system. So that's their software yep. that generates the, the page, the way it looks, allows yep. you to upload easily. And, and, and as you can see, they've got themes, they've got features, they've got all sorts of different ways to, to make your blog a little bit individual. Sure. And that's pretty cool. So you find a theme. They've been around a while. They've, they have been around a while. Yeah. They have been around for a very long time. So you can have a selection of different things depending on what you like and you can create a blog. So if you have any particular passion, any field of expertise that you would like to share with the world, <laughs> maybe having a blog is something you should think about doing. Sure, absolutely. Okay, welcome back to PCTV. Um, we're going to do a quick edition of Fun Stuff. Fun Stuff. And we've picked two things to do for Fun Stuff this time. We're going to do Words with Friends. Words with Friends. So these were both suggestions, actually. Yes, they us, were. Suggestions, definitely, yep. from uh, our viewers and listeners and yeah. hearers and audience. So Words with Friends. Words with Friends is one, and the other one is Unhear It. Now, we'll talk it. about that in a second. But yeah. now, Words with Friends to begin with. Um, basically, it's like Scrabble. So it's, it's exactly like Scrabble. Yeah, it's an online version of Scrabble. So you just go to the Words with Friends website and you can join in straight away. The cool thing about it though is, um, well, like it says here, it says um, we looked up a review of the of the game. We did indeed. We got a screenshot showing you right now, and you can see that it's precisely like Scrabble. It's exactly like Scrabble, except that the cool thing about this is that it's online and it's actually all about social interaction, right? right? Because you're playing with people online. Yep, but you don't actually have to play at the same time. So yeah. That's what they call asynchronous play. Yeah. So much like a chess game that could go for years between old friends when they catch up, yep. the board can just stay there, or um, I guess online it's uh, time zone differences, things like that. And the game can just go on and you can have many games going on in parallel. That's I right, have one up, particular to, up to 20. Very, it says here, very after 20 games. Yeah, apparently it's very addictive. So mm. if you like Scrabble, if you like crosswords or that type of thing, then this is really probably something you want to look into. And like I said, the thing that sets it apart is the social interaction factor. The fact that you can have it integrated with Facebook, uh, the fact you can have it integrated with other social networking platforms means that you get to play with other people yeah. and they may not have to be in your country. Yeah. They could be anywhere in the world. And because it is asynchronous, you can make your move and then wait for them in their time zone to make their move and you can go away and come back to it and continue the game. So that's really cool. So if you're a Scrabble fan... Yeah, yeah. now you can download it to your PC or you can download it to your Apple iPhone or you can yeah. even download it to your Android. Android phone. Yeah. And um, you can play it on the go. And so it's a very, very popular game worldwide at the moment. Funnily enough, you know, it's the, it's the original things. Uh, it's basically Scrabble. It just has another name. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Scrabble for the 21st century. Yeah. Now, let's have a look at Unhear It. Now, Unhear It. <laughs> Unhear It. If you've ever had a song get stuck into your head and you just can't get rid of it, then you go to this website called unhearit.com mm. and basically it says right here, get that damn song out of your head. So how does that work exactly? What are they done? Well, yeah. it says um, we created this site for those who have a song stuck in your head and you can't get that out no matter what you do. Using the latest in reverse auditory melodic unstickification technology, <laughs> wow. we've been able to allow our users to unhear songs by hearing equally catchy songs. So basically it just replaces the song that you've got stuck in your head with something else that they've put together so, I mean, I don't know if it's, it's a dubious a... cure. But, yeah, yeah, because uh, they're putting something else in your head instead. Well, you know, give it a go. I mean, if you're really losing your mind. Yeah. Unhearit.com. It might work. And it's connected up to SoundCloud as well. Yeah, so, I like that. Yeah. It's, it's backed by SoundCloud, which we looked at before. Great site for hosting audio. Yeah. Mm. And that's really cool. And just it's just a quick little thing, a really funny thing that you can go to. You know, I think that um, a lot of people can find it useful because I hate it when I get a song stuck in my head, especially yeah. if it's a commercial. If it's one, or it's one I don't if like. It's a, well, if it's a, a, a commercial that's just got a jingle in my head, then I... Yeah, then this can come in handy. So unhearit.com. It's just it another fun stuff site. Yeah. 
Might be worth noting just on what we said, every site we've looked at has these little links, you know, so you can, again, like, like. it on Facebook, you can send it to tweet, uh, Twitter, uh, whatever this one is, you know, they're everywhere now and it's linking it up to get those like points. That's right, because sharing all your different websites wherever you go to is the single most important thing apparently on the internet at the moment is being the ability to be able to share it and to be able to repost it. And have an opinion on it. And have an opinion on it. All so right. that's unhearit.com. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I hope you enjoyed this edition of Fun Stuff. Yeah. Welcome back to PCTV. In this segment of What Is It and Why Should I Care, we're going to look at Instagram. What is it and why should I care? Yep, Instagram. Now, Instagram uh, is a very, a very popular little application that you can download to your PC or to your smartphone or to your tablet. And it's basically a photographic application right. whereby uh, you take a picture or a video and then what its speciality is choosing filters to transform the pictures and the look and the feel of the photos and uh, then uploading them to your social networking like okay. your Facebook, your Twitter, Tumblr, whatever else that you've got as your social networking platform or all of them. Okay, right. So what are the benefits? What are the differences? What is this compared to all those others? Well, see, initially I think it came out because um, it came out initially to be used with Apple iOS phones. Right. Initially. Oh, and uh, okay. the camera for Apple didn't have the editing features to allow you to put in those filters. Well, not as many mm -hmm. filters and, and um, different things you can do to change the look and the feel of the photos. Right. So Instagram came online so that you take your photo with your Apple camera and then when you upload it, you can add their filters. You can add their all the little tweaks and things that you can do yeah, to touch-ups and whatnot exactly so it's like it was a little niche market I suppose and it everyone was. had an but iPhone but then it went went epically huge after that and yeah. then as the smartphone revolution continued the actual cameras on your smartphones became so much better that they actually had those inclusive however by that stage Instagram already had something in the order of established 100 million users at the moment actually if we go to Wikipedia it says that um, Instagram has gotten over 150 million users according to you know, a Wikipedia that's from incredible. June 2013. Yes, so that's, it is incredible actually. Okay, and one of the unique features about Instagram is it allows you, just like any other social networking tool, it allows you to follow other users. Okay. And um, according to Wikipedia here, we've got the top Instagram accounts for 2012. And as yeah. you can see, number one is <laughs> Kim Kardashian. Of course it is. With over 3.6 million followers. So there's a reason why she's so popular <laughs> in the tabloids and things because well, people are genuinely interested in following every single snap that she takes. Yes, but just the numbers. I mean, every one of these 15 here is more than a million. Yeah, yeah. That's incredible. That is insane. Now, obviously as well, it's got um, the hashtag ability, which means if you've got a subject that you want to specifically put your photos into, then you add the hashtag, which is about that subject, just like you do in Twitter. Yep. And um, then you can follow. The other thing about Instagram is if you choose like, let's say a destination, you can type in, let's say Madrid, Right. And then you can see all of the publicly accessible because obviously you do have privacy account settings in Instagram so you can dictate who does and doesn't see. Like Facebook or any of the others. Exactly. Yeah. And um, if you have publicly set for your um, Instagram and you've gone away on holidays like, like I was saying to Madrid or something, then you can type in Madrid and see other people's Instagram shots of Madrid or any other location that you specify. Okay. Which is also a very cool handy little thing. Yeah. That's yeah. not too bad. So, you know, that's, uh, what is Instagram. it, why should I care? You but can wait decide minute, if you care. Wait a minute, we're going to show you how to download it. Oh, to your phone. Yeah, because this comes, like I said, to your PC, to your tablet, or to your smartphone. So what yes. we're going to do is download it onto my phone and see what it looks like. Okay, let's do that. Okay, so now I've gone into the Google Play Store for my Android device, and I've looked up Instagram, which I've found right here. And um, it says that there's over 200 million users that love Instagram, so I guess that that figure has increased. Anyway, so I just hit install here, and then it gives you permissions, which we have to accept, I guess. 
Okay, so that was Instagram, and that was part of our What Is It and Why Should You Care segment. And as you can see, it was a pretty fun little app. Yeah, it is a fun app. It's certainly very popular. It's very, very popular. Yeah. And I think you'll find that uh, most of the younger generation are definitely very well versed with Instagram and its use. So, yeah. something to keep in mind. Instagram. That's it. Okay, so in this segment of PCTV, we're going to be looking at fun stuff. Fun stuff. And the subject of today's fun stuff will be Flickr. Flickr. Now that's sort of related to our last segment, which we did, which was, um, what is it and why should I care? Yeah. Which was all about uh, Instagram. Now we're doing Flickr. Now Flickr is an online repository, basically, for your photos. Yes. And uh, with everyone having smartphones nowadays, you can fill up your phone storage very very quickly with all your photos very very easily and even still because of the resolution of most of the photos that your cameras can take on smartphones now you can fill up an external hard drive pretty quickly as well so now the cool thing about Flickr is that it gives everyone 1000 gigs yeah. of free storage That's online terrible. yeah a terabyte. a terabyte of storage per person per person is incredible it actually. is indeed um, it is the hardware indeed. behind that is staggering, actually, given how many people have signed up to this thing. Well, according to Flickr here, it says it's enough space for more than 500,000 photos if you want something to give and it some sort of scale. users? Well, according to Wikipedia, they've got over 87 million users. 87 million users at potentially a terabyte apiece is really... Huge! Huge! Uh, huge. I mean, it's that's something that's... 2014, I mean, 2010, that wasn't possible. 2009, that wasn't possible. No, you know, it wasn't possible now, at all. It's incredible. It's because of the, the advent of big data and data storage has grown so big. That's the yeah. only reason why they've been able to, because they didn't actually begin with that amount of storage per user. That's something that's just recently come on. That's right. Because they've had the ability now, technologically, to be able to actually store that type of storage for each user. So a thousand gigs per user is crazy. And the other good thing about Flickr is it's online. So all your photos are in the cloud, which means basically if your smartphone was to get dropped in the toilet or break, or if your PC was to pack up and die, or its hard drive failed, or if your external hard drive was broken or stolen, then um, if you've got Flickr online, all of your photos are in the cloud. Cloud storage. Cloud storage, and it means that you can access it using any device. That's right. Which, for free. I mean, we've got this in fun stuff, that's for sure, but yeah. if you've got kids, I guess this could be an indispensable, because if you lose all of your memories... Um, well, it's, it's kind of like a backup, in a way. It is. And it's now just an expectation. You yeah, know, people expect to be able to upload stuff and it goes somewhere. And it gives you the convenience of being able to view your photos using any device that's got an internet connection. Yes. So, it's got a lot going for it and um, we really like it. So Flickr, if you want a thousand gigs of free storage, then Flickr is your online photo repository of choice. And you're interested in uploading your photos to the yeah. internet. <laughs> oh, like I said, it's got privacy settings and everything yeah. else, so you can dictate who it is that gets to see all your photos. And Always look at that. Always look at that. Mm. Okay, so that's fun stuff for this week. Thanks very much. Alright, thanks very much. So that's uh, fun stuff and why should you care and um, our episode for uh, this week. Yeah. Thank you very much for joining us once again. It's a pleasure to have your company on every episode of PCTV. And please stay tuned for our next episode coming soon. Let us know if you uh, want us to look at anything in That's particular. Right. Any queries or questions, please look at our Facebook page or send uh, your queries and questions to our YouTube account. And the address should be on your screen right about here. Thank Thanks. you.